Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshing of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and look who's back. Hi guys. Tim Flagler is back to tie yet another fly. Let me give you just a little bit of background. Uh, Tim and I went fishing today, and uh, the idea was, as we spoke on the phone about a week and a half ago, it was 71 degrees, sunny, water temps 54 degrees in the Mad River, and I was convinced that we would have Hendrickson's today. Well, so I tied up that whole box, you so, know, spinners and wet flies, parachutes, nymphs. We were going to be on the water from noon till dark and get the spinner fall, and it, it was just, life was just going to be wonderful. Instead, we had, we have frostbite on our fingers, we had gale forced winds, uh, we wound up doing some nymphing. Anyways, we, we did at least do some sampling of the river. We got out the Seine and uh, kicked up the stream bottom and found, yeah. found all kinds of good food, including a bunch of Hendrickson nymphs, which we have right there, which I'm sure you're looking at as we speak. Um, so the Hendricksons are, uh, they're still uh, 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 maybe a week or two away, maybe two or three weeks away yet. Yeah. We'll see Hendricksons, we just didn't see them today, but at least we found the nymphs. So uh, we're gonna tie a Hendrickson nymph. Yep. And uh, I've had a look at, at Tim's Hendrickson box here, and uh, man, I would love to see them all, but let's, let's tie Hendrickson nymph. I'm, sure. Uh, this is something that I tie uh, quite a bit. I've got a few of my own, but it's always interesting to see somebody else's pattern. Yeah, so I, uh, size 14, uh, you can definitely tie them down to a 16, mm -hmm. um, but 14 seems to work real well. This is just a barbless nymph hook mm -hmm. and a 760 fourths of an inch copper bead. You can use gold. I just like copper kind of for the overall, uh, overall tone of this fly. It's a little more subtle than the gold, mm -hmm. I think. Um, thread, uh, I'm using a color called wood duck, 70 denier. It doesn't have to be. Uh, you can use just about anything. Doesn't doesn't matter. Some of the some of the Hendrickson nymphs have a, a really strange light collar behind them. Not not all of them. So um, nothing I saw in there. But uh, I have some video of them with light light collars. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this pattern really is meant to kind of directly uh, imitate the Hendrickson's. Uh, I see back home on my local rivers in New Jersey. So may, maybe a little different than the ones out here. Mm -hmm. And just a few wraps of um, lead-free round wire. I'll bring it down perpendicular, then wrap there, and then bring it parallel, wrap, and then as you rock up and down, you end up with a nice little kind of taper down to the body. Oh, that's a nice trick. Yeah, and you don't waste even a millimeter of the wire when you're doing it. Rather than having all those little half-inch long pieces yeah, right, down there, right. um, one of one of my big things is uh, fine dark markings. And even if you look at those, um, it, you can on the tails and on the legs, you can see fine, fine, fine dark markings yes. on those little guys. And so things like wood duck and Hungarian partridge that have just been great fly tying materials for years and years, particularly that wood duck. It just it's so close. Um, and as small as these these details are, I believe that trout can pick them up mm -hmm. and help. They help them to distinguish between what's protein coming down the river and what's just simply detritus. It's going to have no nutritional value to them at all. And so, just a short little tail on there. Yeah, I know it's subtle, but it it's I really think no. It was, it's I, I think you're right, and and. Um... You know, the last time you were here, you talked a lot about that, both in your yeah. tying and you uh, you did a program for us here for our, our customers, and you talked so much about those fine barred markings on so many different so patterns. So many bugs, yep. yep. And not, you know, not just on aquatic macroinvertebrates either, like like mayflies and uh, caddisflies, on, on bait fish as well. Mm -hmm. You know, darters, dace, they all have those fine dark markings in them. I, I do like to put my wire on the far side of the hook from me. I'm not going to counter wrap the wire, and I don't want to jostle the tail. It, it'll become evident in just a minute. So you just tied in, uh, oh, is that just fine yeah. ultra wire? Yep, uh, yep, just small sized uh, gold ultra wire. Okay. And so, so you use gold. 
Yeah, just um, gold. You could use copper with a copper bead. It's just kind of with the colors that I'm using here, the gold seems to work pretty well. Okay. Not not a big deal color-wise. Pheasant tail fibers, these are um, strip them free from the stem. We're not really worried about um, any kind of natural tips here. So that gets tied in next. And I'm not exactly sure how much this really matters. Um, but I, many Hendrickson's have this light little segment, maybe two segments on their abdomen. And, uh, it's, it's kind of very noticeable on the nib. So there's no question. I yeah. mean, that's, that's always the dead giveaway. Um, when we, when we find ephemerella like this, if they've got that little patch, uh, we know it's a Hendrickson. So you tie that pheasant tail in by the tips. By the tips, and I am. Uh, and I, I noticed you did trim. Did you trim off a little bit of the I, very I, tip? I did, just because those tips can be fragile, and they're okay. they're also somewhat uneven. So okay, um, I want to do that. And then you just you just wrap that in, as if it were a tail, and wrap back to the bend of the bend of the hook. But now, where's your thread? Uh, you my brought th your my thread. thread's here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, you know, just about all living things are darker on the back and lighter on the belly mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and, and and so that's what i'm trying to do with with this thing as well i'm going to use the pheasant tail as the back of the fly the the dorsal fly side if you will and then the darker this becomes well the pheasant tail is the darker side and the the um this lighter dubbing becomes the bottom that so that's going to be that little segment that mm -hmm. you get and then i just bring my dubbing back under tie this down now i am perhaps the world's laziest tire and normally i you know you can cut that off I'm going to use it for the wing case as well. So mm. well, why not? You know, it's already tied in. But this is why I, I put the wire on the far side. So when I take this first wrap here, mm -hmm. it doesn't jostle that that beautiful little wood duck tail. Nice. And yeah. so I kind of use the wire to delineate that, that little segment that's back there. Mm -hmm. And one, one of the things that I've noticed, you know, back in the day, I, I heard that the wing case was supposed to be like a quarter to one third of the way back down uh, the body. But in most cases, when you look really up close, the wing case comes way, way back. I would say on these, the wing cases, uh, the wing case is half. It's half, right. And, and when, you, yeah. when I shoot video of these up real, real close, that becomes very, very evident. And to me, nothing looks, a, a, a kind of a short little wing case just doesn't look good on a fly. No. I, I, I don't know, It's maybe it's just me, but. I'm even going to take one wrap further. Well, here. I mean, I mean, in reality, it's not. It's just. It's not correct. It's not yeah. correct. It's, yeah. it's not natural. What color is that dubbing you're using there? This is a um, squirrel belly, and I, I do like the the natural squirrel belly mm -hmm. um, that you can get. Um, but it's it's kind of got that that weird pinky, orange color mm -hmm. the, the way the natural Hendrickson's do and. Um, you know, there were all sorts of crazy things that people used to use for this color. I, I that whole thing with um, urine stained <laughs> patch of yeah. a female. Yep, vixen fox. Vixen fox. I think we talked about that before. I have some, yeah. but I, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to save it. Well, and you know what? You know what's funny is uh, I think we also talked about this before. The tups indispensable. Yeah, yeah. And um, I actually used that fly today. You did. I did. I was going to try to catch a fish on it and, and say, hey, Tim, come over here and check this out. It's the, uh, boy, I forget. I, I even forget the story on that now. It's, uh, it, it's the it's the wool from the testicles of a ram who has recently bred with a female in heat. Yeah, I think some of those guys were just messing with us, Brian, back in the day. Or they drank a lot. A lot, yeah. Yeah. It's like, do you think these guys will buy this or not? It was kind of funny. Somebody did chime in on our YouTube channel and said, we didn't really use that. We just told the Americans we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the colonists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, All right. What are you doing now? So I'm just taking, there. there's several different ways to do this, but I'm just going to try to uh, get 
get some, they're real, real teeny, but just, I, I don't want to overdo it with these legs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just a few little strands of wood duck coming out either side. And again, as subtle as they are, um, I don't want to snip them off when I snip the butt ends off. So you just took two, two little hanks yep. of wood duck. And just lay them across like that. They they almost blend in. Mm -hmm. You can still see them a little bit there. Sure. And then come over. Pull that down. When I'm tying stuff down, I, I really like to take two wraps around the material. Two wraps around just the shank mm -hmm. underneath. And then two more over top. It just seems to keep everything really locked down. Fortunately, those legs kind of blend in with the dubbing, but I'm not going to be so brave. Well, just pulled it out um, as to snip off that dubbing. Anyway, trickiest part is to get that snipped off fairly tight. Back in the day, I would have used UV Cure resin to reinforce the wing case here. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I have become very sensitized to it. Oh, and really? So I just can't use it anymore, unfortunately. Would you if you could? I would. Just to kind of, um, the UV Cure resin uh, like magnifies that wing case mm -hmm. and, and really helps to bulge it up as well as protect it. But, you know, just Sally Hansen hard as nails uh, just to... Um, make sure uh, with all these flies that have a, a thread collar right behind the bead that's where they're most vulnerable those thread wraps unless you seal them up with some kind of adhesive i don't care how good your whip finish is they they have a tendency to come unwrapped back mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. and it's because they're they're wrapped over material they're not directly on a on a hook shank so they loosen up but um it'll sink in make that uh that pheasant tail wing case much more durable and but yeah, that's that's about it. That's that's really all you need. I love that. I love yeah. that trick of of the folding over the pheasant tail and then a little dubbing over the pheasant tail for that little segment. For that yeah. little segment. Yeah, and it gives that's, you the you know it gives you the kind of illusion of the 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 darker back and, and lighter belly on the fly. And so, um, you know, if this thing's going down the stream and, and moving around and everything like that, it can flash light to dark, light to dark, mm -hmm, and and. Mm -hmm. and, and and it'll look a little bit more like the natural. Now I noticed that um, I noticed that some of your Hendrickson nymphs are tied on jig hooks. Yeah, um, I do, and I tie. It's, it's just kind of what I do. Um, the lighter version, mm -hmm. so lighter colored dubbing is pretty much the only difference. And I tie them on a jig hook, and then I'll tie this darker version on a, on a regular hook. Okay, um, just kind of something I do. Can't really tell you why. But. Well, um, you know, we talked about this on the river today a little bit that I have taken, I fish a rig, which again, we talked about on the river. I fish a rig a lot under an indicator and I've gone to, uh, with a point fly, that's usually a bead head. The split shot will go above that as needed. And then I'll trail an unweighted fly behind, behind it, it yeah. a soft tackle. And I have found that the jig hook um, I'm getting snagged much less often. Yeah. And also the way that my tippet comes off the bend of the hook, it allows that uh, soft tackle or wet fly, uh, I believe, to ride a lot better. And just back there doing its thing. And Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the proponents that will say that a jig hook is going to cause this to ride with the wing case down. If I'm not mistaken, we don't have, get me started. We have we have some footage that's probably playing right about now. I hope. Yeah. So we have some footage that you're looking at right now that should refute the fact that it doesn't matter if this wing case rides down. No, it, it's when when a nymph is struggling to get to the water surface, they I mean they spend. 98% of their lives upside down under rocks, okay? Mm -hmm. So when they when they free themselves from the rocks to either practice swim to get to the water surface before mm -hmm. the hatch, mm -hmm. or they're actually swimming up uh, where the uh, winged adult is going to emerge from the nymphal shock, 
they are all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, 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 they are just struggling to get to the water's surface. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, the fly presents light, dark, light, dark. And it's one of the reasons for doing the back darker here and mm -hmm. the bottom lighter. If it moves, twists around in the current and everything like that, it kind of shows that. Uh, but, but the idea that the, just because we have a jig hook in a certain way, um, and we perceive that it's going to ride absolutely horizontally, which it doesn't, does for not. one. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's ridiculous what side of a Paradigm wing case goes on. It yeah. just doesn't yeah. doesn't hold water. Um, well, uh, I'm glad we had some footage there. And thank you to Tightline Productions. No, sure. sure. Uh, uh, for that footage. You'll be seeing a lot more of that footage from Tightline Productions uh, in our entomology series coming up and hopefully more fly tying videos. And s thank you for tying this box for me. Okay. I, I, <laughs> um, I, uh, we actually have a Hendrickson hatch coming in New Jersey too. So You know what? I, as you know, I, I got off an airplane last night. Uh, I got home about 11 o'clock after a long weekend of teaching schools uh, down in Florida. And... Um, I was uh, really looking forward to getting home and being in bed by about uh, eight sixteen tonight, but now I'm going to go home and tie, tie a few of those. Hands. Yeah, because we're we're close, and we get we get some warm weather, and and it's uh, it, obviously now is time to fish Hendricks and nymphs. Right, and they could be you know simply washing free the way Mayfly nymphs do. Yeah. Um, or they could, you know, in the, the days prior to the hatch, they could start doing their test swim thing up to the water surface, back down to the bottom, which they do on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And trout know it. And, and they will, trout will get off the bottom a little bit and, and start suspending and, and feeding off those, on those na mayfly nymphs that are, that are test swimming. Even before the hatch, you might not sure. see a, a, a winged adult on the water surface at all, but if you know the hatch is coming, it's coming soon. Mm -hmm. Fish, fish those nymphs, you know, a little bit off the bottom, maybe, and uh, it works well, that's well. why. That's again why I fish that that point fly, which is weighted, maybe split shot in front of it, and then I'll go with a even a pheasant tail soft tackle, mm -hmm. or I've got a couple uh, Hendrickson specific soft tackles that I tie, and and then there's the good old Lysen ring lift, that uh, of course. Every drift I make, there's a lift at the end of the drift, but it's especially, especially, what do you got there? That's, it's really old school Hendrickson. Yeah. Dark Hendrickson. Dark wet Hendrickson wet fly. Yeah. Again, yeah. Wood duck wing, wood duck tail. And yeah. these, these things work forever and ever. We, we've kind of forgotten about them in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it, gosh, it can work for anything. It can it can work for an emerger. It could work for um, you know a cripple on the water surface. It could work for a nymph that's swimming to the water surface. Mm -hmm. And and to me, because they're they're weightless and behave in a neutrally buoyant manner, they're much more natural looking, honestly, than something that's got a bead head right. and wire wraps behind it. And so. The, yeah, soft tackles and old school wet flies like this really, really have a place in every. It, it's a lost art. It, it, it's yeah, I think it's a lost art. It's a lost. Uh, it's a lost category of flies in fly shops and to a certain extent uh, nomenclature, um, and 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 they're very, very important to me. I've got uh, entire fly boxes full of soft tackles and traditional mm -hmm. wets. You know, we had Kelly Gallup sitting here a few weeks ago. Kelly talked about soft tackles and wet flies. Of course, uh, we, we all know Davey Watton. Good Lord, that guy will fish five or six of them right in in, in a in a row. Yeah, um, they they um, I uh, I've started doing that myself. And mm -hmm. the you know the the guys back in the day, they they weren't it wasn't about bragging rights necessarily. They were feeding their family sure. with the, the mm -hmm. fish they were catching, and so you know a, a brace of flies, if you will, it does yes. an amazing job. Yeah, uh, it, it really does. Well, all right, friends, you can check out Tim at Tight Line Video on YouTube. You can also check out your website, which is practicalpatterns.com. Practicalpatterns.com. Uh, be sure to hop on over to uh, and check out what Tim does. Uh, one of the one of the best and most recognized fly tires in the business today. It's an honor to have him here in the studio. Uh, it was even more fun to be out on the river with him today and, and experience the horrifying conditions that we did today so um, was it well it was that bad <laughs> it was pretty it was, it was pretty bad it's pretty bad if you if you actually yeah. knew the whole story yeah <laughs> um uh but we're, we're gonna get uh but, so we know that we can uh we we know that we can stay friends throughout horrible conditions yeah yeah so it can only get better from here that's right yeah 
Well, thanks as always, friends. We appreciate you being here. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Hit that like button. That just makes us feel good. And oh, remember to watch this video right here and watch this video right here. And stay tuned because we've got a lot more fly tying content coming your way, including more from Tim Flagler. Thanks as always for being here.